it is cold today. I don't know what happened, but yesterday the weather was so nice and today it is like 50 degrees. Being in Texas, we really have like two months out of the year for good weather. We got November, which is right now, and then we got March. We have like three weeks. But in between, it's either hot as shit or cold as hell. Hey, look who that is. What's up, Mike? What are you doing? Hang on, man. Let me land real quick. Oh, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? What are you up to? Yeah, you know, just trying to enjoy this weather, get a workout in. Workout on that thing? Man, that's an electric bike. <laughs> yeah, you know how much fun this thing is, though. Yeah, I hear you. But hey, you need to get back and finish that video. What video? Oh, that video. Yeah, you're right. I should get going. I'll talk to you later, man. Peace. With most frames, the hardest part of designing a new frame is figuring out how you're going to mount all the parts and how they'll fit together on the frame. It's like figuring out a puzzle. But when it comes to designing a frame, you not only have to figure out the puzzle, you have to design that puzzle. You have to make room for each component, design a way to mount each component, make sure there's enough room for all different brands of components, make sure all the parts work together and fit on the frame, decide on what material you're gonna use, whether it's carbon fiber, <coughs> aluminum, TPU injection molded, then do a cost analysis for each material, weight and strength analysis, once the material is decided, you have to factor in manufacturing processes to see whether or not you can use that material in that specific application. Once all this is done, you have to figure out a way to make this all aesthetically pleasing, meaning it's got to look cool. Once you have the design, that's the easy part. Next, you have to prototype and tweak. <coughs> prototype and tweak. <coughs> prototype and tweak. <coughs> For someone with OCD, that process can go on forever. At some point, the tweaking has to stop. I finally have a model that I'm confident to get made, and this is the freestyle frame that I've been working on. This is the Flight Club Bangkok. 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 I named it Bangkok for two reasons. Bangkok is one of my favorite places in the world. If you've never been there, you should go check it out. It's freaking awesome. And two, Bangkok just sounds like a tough name. And this thing is built to be a tank. I didn't want to get too carried away with the design and get too complicated. I wanted the design to be simple, clean, easy to work on, easy to build, tough, and most importantly, all the components have been designed to have a spot. So you, it takes out the hardest part of designing a new frame. Every component has a place. This is the first prototype. It's a 230 millimeter wide X pattern. It'll use T700 4.5 millimeter carbon fiber chamfered arms with 15 millimeters wide in the middle. So T700 carbon fiber is the best carbon fiber to use for arms because it's a unidirectional carbon fiber. Not regular carbon fiber like T300 where it's like weaves, where it's strong on two axes. T700 is strong in one direction and that's where you want the strength. You want it to be strong this way, like when it breaks and not like folding. Once we get the prototype and test it a bit, we may go up to five millimeter, but it'll depend on the weight. For the prototype, there'll be only one arm option, the five inch arms, but the production version will have several arm options like six inch, seven inch, and maybe even skinnier arms. The bolt pattern on the arms will fit the newer 16 by 16 and the older 16 by 19 millimeter motor pattern. It will have a three millimeter 7075 CNC nucleus plate with butter mounts for 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 components. And the nucleus plate will have eight threaded holes for the arms. I'm testing out a new arm mounting method where each arm will have two screws, but only one of them needs to be completely, completely removed to change the arm. This one needs to be removed, and then this one is slotted to where it just slides out on the bottom. So you just remove this screw, and then you can pull out the arm, swap in your new one. And then these other holes right here are for accessing the flight controller screws, the 20 by 20 and the 30 by 30 which the screws will be completely independent from the arms. And the arms will be joined in the middle so they'll be rock solid when they're all mounted in. The front end will have a 7075 CNC aluminum cage that's designed for mini and micro cameras. 
the inside or one side of the the cage will be milled out as you can see in this 3d printed one one side is milled out so if you want to use a mini cam you use the milled out side on the inside and if you want to use a micro cam you just flip the plates around to where the not milled out sides are on the inside so it closes the gap in between for micro cameras. It's got a built-in high def camera mount that'll fit GoPro sessions and hero form factor. Currently the angle is fixed at 30 degrees, but later there'll be different mounts where you can use to increase the angle of the camera. And it'll have an option for a rear mount GoPro session mount, the one we use in the Proton, to where you can mount it on the bottom of the of the frame and it'll shoot back for some cool chase footage. And I'll be testing this XD60 holder with SMA mount that will have RX mounting options later on. So the idea of this, you put your cable in here, you mount your XD60 and then you can just plug in your, your battery here without you know needing to hold the other end, you just plug it right in. In order to keep the frame lower profile, it's designed to be a two stack design. The flight controller can be a 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 as shown here, which I'll show you what it looks like here. But on the inside, it'll have butter mounts for a 30 by 30 and 20 by 20, and the screws will be completely independent from the arm. The Bangkok is designed to be a two stack system. The main stack can fit a 4-in-1 ESC with flight controller or like a, a PDB with flight controller and then you can have arms on each side and then the VTX, RX, whatever else you want to mount can be put on this little back shelf that's mounted onto the nucleus plate and it'll have this little carbon fiber plate where you can put like a RX on the bottom and then put the VTX on top or you know add another 30 by 30 stack on if you want to add something else on here so even though the stack height isn't that high really you can build a four or five stack system using these two different shells this frame is currently getting cut right now so once we get the prototypes they'll get sent out to the testers for testing and then most likely it'll go through another round of tweaking and prototyping but the brain calc will be available soon you want to be a tester i'm going to give away a prototype frame all you have to do for your chance to win is like this video and then put in the comments below what you think about this frame. What you like about it, what you don't like about it, anything else you'd like to see change, or just let me know your thoughts on this frame. Only subscribers to this channel will be eligible to win, so make sure you subscribe. I'll choose a winner from the comments in about two weeks when we get the prototype frame. The frame isn't in production yet, so some things can still change. So speak up, let me know your thoughts, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.